Okay, I am going to show you a system I put together where I'm controlling the throttle of a DC model train system from a Raspberry Pi. And uh, here's the hardware. Let me just kick off the program and um, you'll see how it works. So uh, to the left of the screen is the Raspberry Pi. It's a model 3B plus, which is nice. It's got four USB ports, it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And then right here I have the Pi cobbler, which um, the T cobbler, which gets the IOs from the Pi over to a breadboard. And over here I've got some circuits. This is just for the sensor. This will light up whenever that train gets over a sensor. The sensor is made up of a magnetic relay switch. It's normally open, but when the magnet underneath the train goes over it, then it closes that switch, and then you see the appropriate LED light up. And then it's also fed as a 3.3 volt into the Pi, so that it reads it as a logical one. Then we've got these relays over here. I'm only using uh, four of those. But uh, when this guy is activated, and they're active low, so the input goes low on this relay, train will go straight uh, forward. When this guy is activated low, it will go in reverse. When this guy is pulsed low, it will switch the track to straight. And when this is pulsed low, it will switch the track to turn. All right, then I've got over here this uh, motor driver module. And this guy is taking the digital controls from the Pi and converting them into currents for this stepper motor. So this stepper motor is put in place of this knob. So on this throttle, the knob is there to turn left and right by hand, but I remove the knob and put a stepper motor to control it from the Pi instead. All right, now so for on this uh, stepper motor, it means you can increment it clockwise or increment it counterclockwise or make it stop at any position. So that's ideal for driving a throttle for a model train. All right, so now that I've shown you the hardware, I will show you the software. I will go into the program into the Python program and show you the commands that make this work. And let's let it finish here. Should be coming up to this sensor to tell it to go ahead and switch the track to turn. And then it'll creep into the station. Once it's sensed at the station, it will tell it to bring it to a complete stop. There we go. All right, I'm going to show you the um, running of the program. And so we're using a Linux operating system on the Pi and a Python program. So I'm going to run this Python program here. And first it's going to ask me some variables. That first one has to do with uh, what is the acceleration and deceleration. So the rate of change of speed. And the second one is, what is the setting for the fastest speed of the train? Third is, what is the setting for the slowest speed of the train? And then, how many times are we going to run the loop before we uh, call it quits? Let me change that one to just two times. Make this a little shorter. All right, so you see what it does is, it's got to put the train in reverse. It's got to switch the track to turn. It cranks up the throttle slowly to a low speed. It senses that it's uh, out of the way of the, the track switch. Switches it, the train to forward, switches the track to straight. Now it's going to crank up the speed to the high speed. And this is where the train, if you had a real big setup, this is where it's going out running around in the country. And uh, so then it's counting with those magnetic relay switches. 
And like I said, once it's gone there on this time twice, then it's going to slow it down back to the slow speed. And then it's going to watch that sensor to tell it, yep, you're, you're good to go. Flip the track to turn, go into the station. And then when you sense it in the station, bring it all the way down to a complete stop. All right, there we go. And you can see that uh, it really takes uh, a setting of like six or seven before the train even moves. Let me kill this. Before the train even will move. So eight seems to be a good, low speed, reliable setting. All right, and now I can uh, show you the program a little bit, the software. So let me show you that. Okay, now I'm gonna go through the Python program that I ran to uh, control this thing. So, there we go. Let's look at it in VI. And uh, I'll just go through the whole thing. This is a good line to have in your Python programs. Uh, gives a path. Let's see, these are all comments. Let's go down here. Here's a bunch of junk that you'll want to put in if you're using these functions that I did. All right, and here we go. Here's a magnetic sensor. So right here, uh, these are the pins, pin numbers of the Raspberry Pi, and these, this is the function. So this is a sensor out. This is a sensor from the track for the route. This is a sensor for the track for where the park is or where the station is. And right here, we're just saying, well, they're inputs, and we want to pull down on those guys to keep them low unless they're forced high. Okay, this is just a print function to, to print what the status of those pins are. Here's the throttle. Doing the same thing where the, the, these two pins, 23 and 24, of the Pi are connected to the relays inputs in 1 and in 2. And their outputs defined as outputs from the Pi, they're initialized high. And then I've got these three functions. Uh, one of them is a halt mode, which means disable both the forward and the reverse. So even if you have the throttle cranked up, it's not going to get to the track. Uh, then we've got this one. When you want to go forward, first kill the power, then uh, enable the forward relay and then in reverse do the same thing except for enable the reverse relay okay then here's where we want to do straight and turn so so here we go pin 20 and 21 of the pi are connected to relay inputs in 7 and in 8 their outputs and their initialized high this is a pulse width because I'm, I'm creating this variable of pulse width to use for the track switching because you always send it just a pulse to make it switch. Then there's no DC power going to the track switch, it's just a pulse. So right here is a variable just to define the width of the pulse and that's saying it's a tenth of a second. So when we want to go straight, what we do is we enable the straight relay, we wait for a tenth of a second, then we uh, deassert it again and disable it. So there's your pulse. And then if you want to turn, you do the same thing, but on the turn relay. And there's your tenth of a second pulse. Okay, now let's look at the stepper motor stuff. So there's five inputs to that stepper motor driver. And uh, this is sleep, that pin. And then these are for the coils. They're defined as outputs and they're initialized zero. And then defining this quarter of a step for the rotation. And, uh, and I'll show you how those are used. So that's called here. So you tell it, I want a certain delay and I want so many steps. And then it'll step through this. It'll set the coils this way, this setting, weights the delay changes the setting, waits the delay, changes the setting, waits the delay, changes the setting. So there's four different settings there. Then it kills all the current through the coils. So 
by going in this order it will go in a clockwise rotation of the throttle and then and then here's the same thing in the reverse direction if you just look at these settings they're in the opposite order of what it was for the others for the forward and so basically this delay step is just saying how long do you wait before you go to the next increment and in that way you're controlling how fast the the throttle rotates so you're controlling its acceleration that way all right then here's a crummy way of making a beep sound if you use it i use that for debug and then uh, here's something that says a hold function which means hold for a certain amount of time and but print so it's a combination print and hold time there's those variables those are the default settings those are all based on experimentation so 150 millisecond delay works really well with the rotation speed I like um, that's the maximum speed setting that's for this particular engine I've got that's the slow speed setting based on that engine and this is saying let's go around the loop three times by default all right now these next functions are just saying look when you start this thing uh, I'm going to use the default unless you tell me a different number. So if you just hit enter through the thing, it'll go through these defaults. This is a way of using defaults or using a new enter number that you enter. Uh, I'm sure there's more efficient ways to do this, and I'm open to suggestions. Anybody has a good uh, input for any of this stuff, uh, positive or negative, is, is uh, welcome. All right, now kick it off, enable the motor driver, turn the track, hold a second, reverse, hold a second, now speed it up to the slow speed, hold a second, monitor the sensor input. So if that sensor input goes high, then it, it goes and does this thing. It, it uh, slows it down to the slow speed. Uh, then it makes the track straight, it uh, holds a second, then makes it forward, speeds it up to the full top speed now. So now it's running around the loop. Now here's the counter, the incrementer, so that it's counting how many times it goes around a loop. When that is done, it slows it down back to the slow speed. It waits, it looks at the sensor for when can I switch the track to turn, and then when it senses it, it'll turn it. It'll hold a second. It'll uh, then look at the park sensor. And when that guy asserts, it brings it all the way down to a, um, a complete stop. Okay, that's the end of the program. So, um, after it shuts it, down after it completely uh, brings the engine to a stop then it puts the track straight and uh, and then it disables the motor driver and it sits there for 10 seconds and then it'll do the whole routine all over again all right so that's the program uh, I hope you get a kick out of it I got a kick out of it and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out I'm welcome to feedback uh, positive or negative of what you thought of it and suggestions for improvement and ways to uh, make it better or whatever questions you have I'll be glad to answer I'm gonna put another video out shortly about the electrical uh, properties and show you some of the concerns you might run into and uh, I'll compare the infrared sensor to the uh, read relay sensor and I wanted to just see how those guys uh, did versus each other and what the trade-offs are. And uh, so there you go. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.